Hi, everybody. Welcome in, my friends. Hello, hello. Hello to everybody on YouTube who is always here first. Hello. <laughs> it's so good to see everybody. And Facebook is going to be making their way in here in just a second. Guys, I was late. I was late again. I was late again. Somebody put my name on the clipboard. Listen, I was late because I did a stupid. I did a stupid and I was scrolling through social media and looking at news. Y'all, I don't do that. <laughs> I just don't. I try very, very hard to stay away from, like, I scroll social media for, like, looking to see what y'all are making. But, like, as far as the rest of the world is concerned, I kind of live with blinders on because I have ridiculous amounts of anxiety, which I don't know anybody who is living in this day and age that doesn't have anxiety from reading the news. But y'all, come on. I, I'm just really disappointed in human beings at the moment. And I just needed to share that with y'all. I don't want to start a whole social commentary um, just because it's it's 100% not necessary. I, I If you know, you know. Um, and People, I just want you to do better. That's all. And I'm not even talking to this group because y'all are amazing. Y'all are amazing and you get it. But can we please tell the rest of the world that they need to do better, please? Can we just... Ugh. I just can't. I just... I just can't. <laughs> Some of you human beings out there are embarrassing me to be a human being. Do better. Ugh. <laughs> okay. Ran over. <laughs> Welcome in. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I just, you know, and that's what I get. That's what I get for looking online before getting on the live here. I should know better. Right? Wanda, mm, say it louder for the people in the back. My people are beady people and they're good people. Yes. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, okay. Y'all, I needed this. I needed to come and be with y'all. <laughs> oh, okay. So let's talk about what we're going to do today because we're going to do something fun. Um, so <laughs> I need to reset. Hold on a second. I got to reset my brain because I just got, I went to 10 real fast. <laughs> Just dial it back a little bit. Make jewelry. Make jewelry. We're making jewelry today. We're not talking about social issues, even though I could probably go on for a million years. I'm not going to. I definitely, Nicole says I need a drink and a Snickers. I need a, I need a Diet Coke and a, and a Krispy Kreme donut. That's what I need. <laughs> it's the heat. It must be. It must be. Jan says it's the heat. Y'all, listen, I'm over the heat now. <laughs> I'm ready for fall. Okay, so here we go. It is Tuesday. And don't, don't, don't get it confused with Feel Good Friday because I almost did the whole Feel Good Friday thing. It was right on the tip of my tongue. I had to remember. Y'all, it's only Tuesday. So how are you doing out there? Are you hanging in there? Don't go to don't check out the news, whatever you do. Jeez. Um, <laughs> oh, I have to laugh because if I don't, I'm just gonna. Right? Hot crispy hot words. Hot crispy cream. There is something. There is something that just warms the soul. A hot donut'll do it for you. So it is Tuesday, which means we're doing a project today. And I'm gonna I'm gonna be hundred percent transparent with you guys about this project. So, um, first of all, I, on Mondays, you guys sort of know what my schedule is on Mondays. I, I do a lot of prep work on Mondays for the rest of the week. And, uh, two things that I do on Mondays are I make sure that I have a hardwired project because hardwired meets today at 4 PM Eastern time. Um, and I make sure that we have a Tuesday project and <clears throat> for whatever reason, I did not have a Tuesday project um, and I came in my office yesterday and I sat here and I had the worst creative block, which I thought was gone because, you know, I had taken vacation and usually that helps get me out of creative block. But for whatever reason, I sat here yesterday and I pulled through old beads. I looked at pendants. I looked at charms. I looked at things that I have in my stash that I haven't looked at in a million years trying to find 
inspiration. And I could not for the life of me come up with a single project to do today. And I don't know what the problem was. It was so bad that last night, it was probably 11 o'clock, right around 11 o'clock, Colleen's messaging me and, and chit-chatting with me. And I, she's like, you got a project for tomorrow? <laughs> nope, I don't. It's 11 o'clock, I don't have a project. She shows me this amazing pair of earrings. And they were earrings that she created using beads from the July bargain bead box. And I was immediately inspired. That, y'all, listen. Go to your bestie. Whatever the problem is, go to your bestie. Because <laughs> they will pull you out of it. And I was like, you know what? We did the bargain bead box last week. But I wasn't super, I, like, I was okay with the project that we did. But it wasn't, like, my favorite project. And I felt like it needed a revisit. So that's what we're doing today. We're going to use some more of the beads from the July bargain bead box because they were so stunning. It's a color palette that I absolutely love. For whatever reason, I didn't pick that up yesterday. It took me until nearly midnight to come up with what Colleen just needed to tell me at, you know, noon yesterday. Hey, these bargain bead box beads are still gorgeous and you can still use them even though it's August. So that's what we're going to do. I really loved the, um, the July bargain bead box. The color palette is one of my absolute favorites. And so we're going to use some more of those beads today. If you want to see last week's project, don't forget that you can always go back and watch the replay. You can watch that on Facebook Live or, you know, re replay on Facebook Live here. Or you can go over to my YouTube channel and subscribe. And then that way you can rewatch these videos as many times as you want to. I just kind of find that the YouTube channels... Um, the fast forwarding button and all of those things are much easier. The controls are a little bit easier over on Facebook, or I'm sorry, YouTube than they are here on Facebook. So if you've not subscribed for no other reason than it's just easier to rewatch a video over there, go for it. Um, so if you want to see what we did last week with the bargain bead box, definitely check that out. It was a cool project, just wasn't my absolute favorite. And so I wanted to do something just absolutely fabulous, which is what I did. So we're going to do a multi-strand necklace today using some more of those bargain bead box beads. And then I'm going to list this in my shop. I don't know if anybody's noticed or not, but there are no more finished pieces available for purchase in my Etsy shop. It's all just kits and maker mixes. So I'm going to try to be doing my best to restock. I have a whole box of things that need to be listed. I'm going to do those as I can. Um, so don't forget that I actually make finished pieces of jewelry, not just kits. <laughs> and this one today, it's going to go over in the shop. So if you like it, you want to buy it, you don't want to remake it, I got you. Okay, so that is all for what we are going to do. We are, um, we're going to turn around, we're going to do the bargain bead box. I'm not going to unbox again, because we've already done that. Um, but we are going to put together a multi-strand necklace. This one is um, a lot of stringing, but just gorgeousness, okay? It doesn't have to be hard. So that's what we're doing. I'm going to turn you around. Um, Daphne says, just wondering where you got those little trays. You have these. Hold on. Are you talking about these? Are you talking about these? Listen, I got these at the Dollar Tree and... Sam is the one who introduced me to these. And then we all went crazy and bought them. You're going to get a big old stack of these. I think you can get a stack for 10 at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. And I got a bunch of them. So if those are the trays you're talking about, go to the Dollar Tree. All right, I'm going to turn you around. We're going to get started. All right. You get rid of that. <laughs> Don't need to show that logo here, right? Where's my bead mat? Let's grab my bead mat instead. Okay, so I was, like I said, feeling like I didn't do a project that really, I mean, I liked our project. It was great, but I feel like I could have done more. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to do more. And I am using, I don't know what happened to the, oh, I'm using some of these textured rings these little hammered rings from Tierra Cast. I'm going to use two of these. Uh, one of them already has the links for our necklace attached to it. So I'm just going to show you the one. But this is our go between. You guys know I love to use a decorative ring for things. I'm going to use this decorative ring as our our transition spot between our, our three strands and then the length portion that goes around your neck for our necklace. So I'm going to lay this out and then I'm going to just kind of show you where we're going and then we're going to bead this up. Okay. All right. So. 
we're going to do three strands and I'm actually going to start out by showing you what the bottom strand is going to look like and we're gonna work from there. So our bottom strand, if you'll remember, the Bargain Beadbox palette for July was peacock colors in beautiful blues and greens, okay? And there were even some of these laser cut peacock feather charms that were part of um, the box. I'm gonna use these as our bottom layer. I'm also going to use some of these beautiful AB crystal spacers, which I adore, um, and then some smaller beads. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a strand here, and I want to pull up, I took a picture, I'm going to pull up the picture to make sure that I use the correct amount of beads here. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I did seven beads. There's four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I'm going to lay out seven beads. Then we're going to do a metal bead, a little tiny metal bead, because we're going to hang one of our charms. Let's scoot this over a little bit, too. Okay, so we're going to hang a charm. Then I'm going to do two more beads, a metal bead, and another charm. Okay, then I'm going to do three beads. And then four little metal beads. Just want to lay this out so you can see what our bottom strand is going to look like. Because I want to show you what our actual little focal here is. Because I want I want you to I want you to go shopping. I want you to go shopping over at Bargain Bead Box. Look. Okay, this is my favorite color in the history of the world. Next to red, and I'm talking like deep, deep reds. This is my next favorite color ever. This is Bermuda blue, and I don't care if you if if you want to say that Swarovski was the one who created Bermuda blue originally, or if you just don't want to use the Swarovski word. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, anywhere I see this color, this is called Bermuda blue. This is actually not a Swarovski. This is actually a glass piece that I got from Bargain Beadbox, and as far as I'm concerned, that Bermuda blue is spot on. I'm going to use that as our focal. I got one of these and then look, I got, so they have those and they also have some of the smaller ones as well. I got two of the little baby ones too. They're blue and green and purple. And you can really kind of see that purple flash on this one. Do you see that? So basically what I'm saying is, is that if you're looking for these kinds of crystal pieces and you don't want to spend an absolute fortune on them and you're going to make, you're going to mix them with other like Chinese crystals and things, and you're not necessarily going to mix them with your gemstones, which you absolutely can. I don't judge. Um, but if you want to be a little bit more cost effective, Bargain Beadbox very often has these kinds of pieces. So if you're looking for some of this like Czech glass that looks very similar to the Swarovski, definitely, definitely go look. Okay. I, like I said, I got some of the smaller ones too, to make some matching earrings, but that's going to be our main little focal here. All right. Then I'm going to just finish off that pattern. I'm just going to repeat. So we're going to have two more of the little charms and we're going to go on up. Right. And then I'm going to create another layer that is some chain. And then I'm going to do another beaded layer. I'll show you that beaded layer when we get to that point. But the first thing I want to do here is I want to prep everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put jump rings on all of my charms and on my focal here. I'm going to use an eight millimeter jump ring on my focal just because it is a little bit large and I do have a larger kind of surface area to cover. You can see it's kind of wide. So an eight millimeter jump ring is probably your best bet. I couldn't get a six millimeter jump ring through this. So um, if you're looking to shop on those, just know that you are going to need a little bit larger of a jump ring. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and set that. That's ready to go. Okay, and then I'm going to put six millimeter jump rings on all of the little peacock feather charms here. Now, I absolutely love these. So these are that stainless steel, but it's, it's that laser cut. So you can actually see where the cut happened on the sides. So pretty. I'm kind of in love with laser cut things at the moment. I want to show you a couple of other things that I grabbed. Um, I feel like we can kind of chit chat a little bit today as we're working because 
this project is basically just some stringing um, and it's not going to take us very very long to put this together but if you're interested in other kinds of laser cut things let me show you a couple of things that are out there at the moment so i know that it's only august but as jewelry makers we're always kind of trying to stay ahead of the game as far as like the season changes and the holidays that are coming and a lot of you are already working on halloween jewelry a lot of you are already working on fall jewelry you're going to see that here in the community we're going to we're going to start to kind of transition into some fall jewelry over the next couple of weeks as well. Um, but Halloween is always one of my favorites. So I wanted to show you a couple of pieces that I got just recently to show you how popular. These are not the only thing that are out there. Like there's a lot, but laser cut Halloween is everything this year. Look at these, look at these little witches. They're so pretty. How pretty is she? And her hat even says witch. And she's just a pretty little, I got two of them. They're a little bit larger than what I expected. I, I'm still going to make earrings out of them. Um, I did expect them to be a little bit smaller, but I'm not mad about it. But this is that, that again, it's that laser cut kind of stainless steel that is everywhere right now. I actually got these at uh, Cherry Tree Beads. They had them in different colors, but I thought those were so cute right? I mean, they're just, they're just kind of lovely. So I got two of those to make some earrings out of. Um, but I've been seeing moths. I've seen owls. I've seen, um, you know, skeletons and pumpkins, uh, acorns and squirrels. Um, the laser cut is just really, really popular right now. Let me show you the other pair that I got. Um, so these are just little potion bottles, which I thought were very enchanting and whimsical. Look at the little potion bottles. Those are going to make cute little earrings too. And this is in the gold color, but it's still that, um, laser cut. So fun, right? These are super, super fun. So along the lines, like bargain bead box is always kind of on trend as far as the things that they incorporate. So these, um, they're peacock feathers. We're definitely on trend with this whole laser cut trend that's going on right now. So if you're looking to um, to incorporate some of those things into your jewelry making, I think just about everybody's got laser cut items at the moment. Grab them up because they're super cool. And what's really cool about them is that you can get really intricate with them. Like the little, the little eyelashes, like that's not easy to do on a pendant. So the laser cut makes it makes it so that you can have those kinds of details. I just thought they were cool. I wanted to share with you guys. All right, so let's move on here. We've got all of our jump rings. And now we're going to start with some stringing. I'm going to use some of my 49 strand silver color. Use whatever it is that you're comfortable with. I do love the 49 strand because it has the most flexibility. And when I'm doing a multi-strand design, I really do love that nice drape that you get from the 49 strand. Uh, you don't necessarily have to use the, the silver. Erica says cherry tree is just down the road from me. Listen, I, I oh, cherry tree beads gets me all the time because of their ads on Pinterest. I cannot stay away from that shop. I am. And they don't even know who I am. I don't even care. I, I just think they're fun. They have some really cool pieces. I get their emails. Like I get stuff from a ton of bead shops. You guys know. Um, but I have my favorites and cherry tree is right up there with my Sam's bead shop. As far as favorites are concerned, I really love them. And they ship really fast too. If you're, if you don't live down the road from them. <laughs> All right. So I've thrown on my crimp. I've thrown on my wire guardian. I'm going to take my bead string wire back down through my wire guardian and then back down through my crimp. I'm going to make sure that those wires are not crossing inside that crimp. All right. You want to be sure that those wires are running parallel inside there. And you can kind of check by looking down through your crimp. See how you can look down through the crimp. I know it's a tiny little guy, but you can look through there just to be sure that your wires are not crisscrossing so that when you go to crimp, you don't crush the wires, right? That's why that's really, really important. You're going to come in with your crimper tool. You're going to place that into the back notch. You're going to give that a squeeze. 
All right, you're going to turn that sideways, put it into the front notch of your crimper tool, and then you're going to give that a squeeze. That just tidies it up and makes it really small. Okay, and then you're going to come in with your cutter and trim off. All right. Okay, now I'm going to do some stringing, and I'm going to start out with some metal beads. I'm using them, these really tiny little metal beads really as just kind of some length extension here. So uh, if you don't want to use jump rings to extend things, I highly recommend tiny little beads or, or um, seed beads, right? So I'm using metal here, but you could definitely use some little seed beads for the same purpose. So I thread on two metal beads. I'm going to thread on one of these iris coated metallic druck beads that was also included and these are actually the beads that inspired me these are the beads that colleen used to make her amazing earrings with and I, that was the bead that i was like oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> i remember why i love that box all right so i put on one of those and then i'm going to stack up two of these rhinestone spacers with the AB finish. Now you don't have to stack up two. They kind of stack funny. Um, so you do have to be kind of careful of that, but you, they interlock with each other sort of like a puzzle, right? So they won't stack straight up like that. You got to kind of give them a little wiggle so that they kind of fit together like a puzzle piece. Okay. All right. So there are two of those. I just doubled them up because I wanted that extra little bit of sparkle there, but you don't have to double them if you don't want to. Okay. So now I'm going to thread on seven of these beautiful blue rondelles that have that AB finish to them. So there's two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right, that's going to give us a nice little bit of length. All right, those are so pretty. All right, now I'm going to thread on a metal bead. Now this time the metal bead is not necessarily working as to help with length, but it is helping to be a protective barrier between my bead stringing wire and the jump ring that is on my charm. So I'm gonna thread my charm on and then immediately thread on two more of these rondelles. And then I'm gonna push all this down so that you can kind of see how that charm is gonna hang over the top of that metal bead. And that way that jump ring doesn't touch my bead stringing wire and doesn't cause any abrasion, right? Okay, so then I'm gonna do another metal bead Right, and then two, oh, I'm sorry. Then my the next charm. And this time I'm gonna do three of the rondelles. Okay. So two metal bead, three rondelles. Now I'm gonna do four metal beads. This is going to hang in the very bottom center of this strand. Hi, Pam. Welcome in. All right. Then I'm going to thread on my fancy little crystal guy here. And he also will sit on top of those metal beads. He does have a little bit more room so that he can kind of move around a little bit. He's got a full four, four beads that he can kind of travel on if he wants to. Okay, I'm going to do another three rondelles. Okay, a metal bead. And then another charm. Okay, two rondelles. A metal bead. A charm.
And then seven rondels. Actually, let's just bring all this over here so I don't have to keep reaching across, you guys. I apologize for that. I don't like it when I do that. <laughs> okay, so seven. Ooh, yes, they would. Alyssa says my nails would look stunning in that blue. I'm telling you, I got to go get my nails done today because I got, well, it's just time, but also because I got glue on them and it won't come off. Um, I'm never brave enough to do like blue, like deep blue, but you might be right. I might need to think outside my nail box a little bit. <laughs> I wish I could get that, that shift in nail polish. All right, how beautiful would that be? Oh my goodness. Just coat my nails in. <laughs> Just coat my nails in crystals, please. <laughs> All right. So this is going to be, like I said, this is our bottom strand. Look how beautiful that is, right? This is, this is going to be one heck of a piece when it's finished. I promise you. All right. So Next up is just like we did over here. So I've got the two um, beautiful AB rhinestone spacers. I know Kim says, once you find a nail color, it's hard to switch. It is. I'm like obsessed with this pink, but fall is coming and I am going to have to transition into something more fall appropriate. It's, it's just very difficult for me. <laughs> very difficult. All right, then one of our little metallic druck beads and then two met or two metal beads just to finish off this strand. And then we're going to crimp it. And then we're going to move on to the next layer in this. That would be beautiful all by itself, let's be honest, right? So if you don't like multi-strand designs, this is this is going to be a beautiful piece just like this. You could put chain on the rest of it if you wanted to. A beautiful, like, organza ribbon for the length. I don't think ribbon gets used enough, you guys. I love ribbon, and it's so lightweight and easy to wear. Um, so just a thought there. But I'm going to crimp. So there's my crimp bead. Ooh, copper or bronze nails for fall. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could definitely go for like a beautiful coppery, maybe like a carnelian coppery color. All right. I just have to convince myself that it's okay to think outside the pink box. <laughs> I don't always have to go with pink. I just love it, though. It just makes me happy. <laughs> it clashes with my hair, and I don't even care. That's how much I love it. All right. Making sure those wires are not crisscrossing. Put that into the back notch of your crimper tool. Turn that sideways. Put it into the front notch of the crimper tool. Then give it that tug test. That's always super important. You're going to come in with your cutter. Trim off the excess. Okay. All right, that is the bottom strand of our three-strand necklace. So, again, we're just doing simple stringing here, but the results are gorgeous, so we don't even care that it's just simple stringing. We don't always have to do crazy, intense techniques for things, right? Okay, so the next strand, if you'll remember, uh, in the box was included some chain. They always include chain, and it is the same color as the stainless steel color of or the not, why do I keep saying that of the steel color I don't have to say stainless why do I do that uh, but it's the same color as the charms so it's not like a bright silver it's more of this you know it's this this kind of steel colors almost like antique silver color right so there was some chain that was included and I have cut the chain into five strands. I had a little tiny bit left over, but I've cut this into five strands that are all exactly the same length. And I'm going to attach these all to a single jump ring. However, last night I, I, and I, I went to bed thinking about this. Okay. So when I put this together originally, I took a six millimeter jump ring and I thread all of those chains on. However, the way that these chains are made, it's that kind of curved, uh, curved chain. And because of that, when you take five strands that are exactly the same length and you lay them all together, it stacks 
but based on the jump ring, it hangs away from me. So the stack is not thick. The stack is wide. It's funny. And the reason that I bring this up is because a lot of times we talk about jump rings facing the correct direction. Let me show you what I mean, okay? Because I think that I think it's going to make more sense if I if I actually show this to you. We talk about how our jump rings face to make sure that everything is facing us the correct way, but I never think about that when I am doing chain. And this is the one time that it actually makes a really big difference. So let me show you what I mean. It's kind of interesting. All right, so you thread all of this chain onto the same jump ring, right? And you'll see that it'll all stack together based on the way that those chain links are uh, shaped. It all kind of stacks up, right? Well, you get the wide width of this if this jump ring is facing towards you, just like you would if it were beads or, or whatever, right? When I went to attach this to my decorative ring, though, the jump ring faces away from me. So now what I'm getting is this side view of the chains. I may as well have just strung one chain on there, right? So I need to go between jump rings so that I can get the thickness to see the thickness of that chain, not just knowing that it's there. This has never happened. I've been making jewelry forever. This has never happened to me before. It's just never come up, which is weird. But you can see that you can see what I mean. Like we need to go between jump rings so that we're seeing this instead of this, because this is just as good as just one single strand of chain. Whoop de doo! It's five wide, but you'd never know it because of the way that it, it hangs. Okay, so I learned a little something, and I wanted to share that with you guys as well. Okay, so because of that, I'm going to take this all off of that six millimeter jump ring, and I'm going to find a smaller jump ring here and I'm going to thread all those strands onto a smaller jump ring then use my six millimeter jump ring. It's just weird because it's common sense uh, in jewelry making but I've never had it come up and be an issue until this necklace. So just goes to show you never know Learn something new every time you go to put your jewelry together, right? All right. Those, my tiny little jump rings sometimes are not exactly the same size. We'll use those two. It is good info to know. And I, like I said, I, I've never had it be an issue until today. And it has to do with the way that this chain is shaped. Because with other chains, it's not necessarily an issue. But because the way that this chain has those natural not natural, but it has those curves in, in the links. It naturally wants to stack up like that. And that doesn't really give me the desired look that I want as far as like the reason why I picked five chains for this layer. All right, so I'm going to use a little jump ring this time. And <laughs> Jen says, this keeps you up at night? Honestly, it does. I mean, there are other things that keep me up at night. But yes, this was one of those thoughts when I laid down last night, I was thinking, okay, I'm ready for tomorrow. But you know what? There's just something not quite right about that necklace. And so then I had to go through that whole th thought process to figure out what exactly it was that was bugging me about it. And this is what it was. All right. So now a smaller jump ring here. Now I used a smaller jump ring for two reasons. Number one, I didn't want to change the length too much because I had already put this necklace together and had decided what it was. This was a change that literally happened. Like I just said, while I was laying in bed last night, it wasn't actually uh, a change that happened while I was putting this necklace together. So this was an afterthought. I don't want to adjust the length too much. I also don't want to di distract from the overall design a whole lot either. So Using a little jump ring there. Now I'm going to use that larger six millimeter jump ring. Okay, that is going to be where I connect, which I should have already connected this guy, but we'll do it in a minute. All right, so now you can see once I, because the decorative ring is going to face towards us. That jump ring is going to face away from us. Now I'm going to get the frontal view 
of all of that chain, which is what I was looking for. It's just that tiny little jump ring that's going to make all the difference in the world. So, okay. Now I'm going to come over here to the other end and thread all of these onto this little tiny jump ring. Now this is another kind of tricky part um, where I want to be sure that all of my chains go on in the same order. So just kind of have to, I normally do this by holding this up, but you guys can't see it if I do it that way. So I'm just kind of smoothing the chain down with my fingers and making sure that it's all in the same order as it is on the other side so that I don't get any of those chains crisscrossed. Which is proving to be a little bit difficult because I can't hold this up away. I want you guys to be able to see is the thing. All right, so smooth all this back out again. Make sure everything is in order like it should be. Maybe if I lay it down, that'll help. It's funny when you do things <clears throat> off camera, you take for granted. <laughs> how easy it is to do it off camera and then to have to do it in a, in a shot. And it's like, Oh, well, that's a little bit more challenging when you're trying to actually show somebody. All right. So what I want to do is I just want to make sure that I hook all of these, like I said, in order, but it's a small jump ring. So I have to be careful because it's very easy to grab them out of order. All right, close that back. And then we're going to use another six millimeter jump ring here. And we will attach that to our other decorative ring here in just a little bit. But now you can see when I lay this out this way, I'm getting the, the full thickness of that, which is what I was going for. Just wasn't achieving it with just the single jump ring. All right. So then this is our bottom strand, right? We've got the chain as our next strand. And then we're going to do another little beaded strand here. Let me go ahead and attach this one to our decorative ring. Yeah. There's a reason I haven't shown you <laughs> the other decorative ring. It's got our, um, our finishing length on it. So I'm not really trying to be secretive, but I'm just trying to stick with one, one step at a time here. Okay. So these ends would obviously go onto our other decorative ring here. Okay. But we're going to do one more strand, one more beaded strand. Grab the beads we're going to use, which were also in our bead box. So I've got two of the pave beads in my very, very favorite color of the paves. And then these awesome faceted beads that have like that, that metallic belt running through them, which I think is just kind of cool. So this is going to be our top strand. And each one of these beads is going to have a metal bead in between them just to space them out so that each bead kind of has its own now, I normally don't do a necklace like this. This is a little bit different for me. I normally will do my heaviest strand, meaning the biggest beads, normally do the heaviest strand on the bottom. So this was a little bit different of a design for me. Um, if, if that makes you uncomfortable, <laughs> I know some of you will be like, this is weird. I don't like it. Fix it. If that makes you uncomfortable, make the larger beads your bottom strand, right? it actually does work out really nicely. And you're going to see when I put the whole thing together, it actually works. But my instincts when I'm designing something tells me to put the, the biggest, chunkiest, heaviest beads on the bottom. I totally ignored that this time around. And I think that it worked out really nicely. So you be the judge when we get to the end here, but I'm going to take another strand of my bead stringy wire. And don't need quite as long of a piece this time because this is our shortest strand for the necklace. Right, bring in a crimp. Okay. 
All right, and again, our wire guardian. <laughs> Everybody says, wow, that's gonna be gorgeous. I know, just wait until you see the whole thing finished. It's crazy because I went all day long yesterday without any idea what the design was going to be. And I put this together right, literally right before I went to bed. And I was like, dang, why couldn't I have come up with something so fancy and amazing like at noon yesterday? Would have saved me a whole day of wondering what it was I was going to make. <laughs> I was really impressed with myself. I don't know. I guess sometimes that last minute is is really what I, my brain needs. I don't know. I don't know. I know that I would not have made any of these choices had it not been for Colleen. So she most definitely saved the day as far as our design is concerned. She, she gave me the, the inspiration and the little push that I needed to get this one done. All right. So next up, I am going to put a metal bean at the, at the top of this design, just like right next to my crimp. Okay, so metal bead. Then I'm going to do, let's see, how many metal beads? I think I only did the one. I'm going to do a rhinestone spacer, a pave, whoops, and then... Oh, Fran, I love that idea. Fran says you could place... Well, whoops, you could put small lobster clasps on the ends of the third strand and then you could rearrange it if you wanted to. You absolutely could do that. And then that also kind of gives you uh, like the convertible look in that you could actually use the top strand as a bracelet if you wanted to, uh, or you could just take it off altogether. Like if you were not feeling like you needed all three strands, you can take you could take off the strands, you know, and kind of rearrange as however you wanted to. I love that idea. I love convertible jewelry. Um, it's always a really fun, fun thing. I'm not super great at designing convertible jewelry because you do have to kind of take into consideration. I'm putting a metal bead in between each one of the green beads. You do kind of have to take into consideration the length of bracelets when you are creating um, necklaces that parts of you want to double as a bracelet. Um, you know, to that you could wear as a bracelet, or if you wanted to um, make a multi strand bracelet out of a really long necklace, again, you kind of have to think about your measurements there. And we all know I don't math very well. So <laughs> that's one of the major things that kind of keeps me away from making jewelry that could be a necklace or a bracelet because I never can seem to get the measurements correct on things like that. I think I overthink it though. Um, but I do love that though. You, you definitely could use like decorative clasps that could, you know, be part of the design as well. That's pretty, that's a, that's a pretty cool idea. I like that a lot. All right. So <clears throat> again, I'm just putting these beautiful green beads with a metal bead in between them just to kind of set them apart from each other. So they're not really crowding each other out. And Got one more of those. And then we're going to do our rhinestone spacer, a pave bead, a rhinestone spacer, and one more metal bead. And it looks like I originally had two metal beads at the top of this design. I'm wondering if I still need to do that or if it's gonna make any difference for the length here. Which is kind of frustrating because it means we have to restring this. Cause I, I, obviously I had two. Hmm. I suppose I shouldn't change things that I had done already. So we're gonna restring this. It'll just take a second. <laughs> Don't be an engineer if you can't math. I definitely can't. Here's the thing. I did fine with math in school, but when I got out of school, I was like, wow, I don't need that anymore. And so I just kind of dumped all that out of my brain. <laughs> okay. So I just took all that off, right. And added an extra metal bead at the top, just because I don't want to throw the measurements off too much. So we're just going to restring this really quickly. Um, I, I don't, I, I, 
I learned as much as I needed to to get through <laughs> school. And then um, anything that wasn't like basic math, I just kind of, you know, I filled that up with other things. I needed the room for something else. <laughs> All right, just restringing this. So um, speaking of... <laughs> quick little, a quick little complaint here. Okay. I just want to complain on, on us here in the United States because we are taught everything in inches <laughs> and jewelry makers need to know everything in centimeters. Everybody needs, we need to know metric. I was not taught metric as my first measuring. I was only taught um, in standard. So I have everything is measured for me in inches. Um, I have had more than one person who just randomly comes through my YouTube and watches my YouTube channel. And they're like, can you please give your measurements in metric? And they get really mad at me. And I'm like, I would love to be able to do that for you. However, I don't know metric. I don't, I don't, as far as measurements are concerned, I do for beads, like six millimeter, eight millimeter, like I get it there. But as far as like length is concerned, I wasn't taught that. So I have no idea how to give you metric measurements. I apologize. I wish that I could, but it is not something that I ever learned. And at this point, you know how they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks? <laughs> I don't think I can learn metrics. Um, for measurements. And I wish I could because I know that it is frustrating for those of you who live outside of the United States who want measurements from me. So I apologize on behalf of all of us who were taught to measure things with inches. It's frustrating. <laughs> it's hard to work in an industry where it's all in metrics, but, but we don't, we don't metric. We don't measure in metrics. Okay. So I'm going to crimp again. Okay. And then we will put all of this together and I'll show you what I used for the length of this. Now, the length that I use, you guys might not like, and that's okay. Um, you definitely can switch it out for something else if you wanted to use leather or more chain, or if you wanted to bead instead of what I'm going to use. I actually am using suede lace. Um, it's faux suede lace. So no animals were harmed in the making of the suede. Um, but I chose two colors and I'll show it to you here in a second to do the length. Oh, Carrie says me neither. One of those things is fractions too. I cannot, I did. That is one of the things I actually did really bad at in school was fractions. I don't know why I just Fractions and word problems. And I know why word problems messed me up because English words are kind of my thing. Um, and you mix words with math and it's like, okay, hold on. Somebody needs to stay in their lane here. <laughs> so I never, I never did very good with word problems and I did terrible with fractions. Awful, awful with fractions. Yeah, Janelle says, I always Google to find out how to go from um, inches to metric. I do too. I have an app on my phone where I just punch it in and it'll convert it for me. But um, as far as it, that works when you're writing it out, but if you're talking, which people come to my YouTube channel, you know, and they watch me talk through a design, they're not going to get those measurements out of my mouth. You know what I mean? And that's, that's, I understand the frustration there. All right. So there's our third strand. And use... Another jump ring here, and we are going to attach that. Right? Forget word problems. Don't mix my, my English and my math together, please. <laughs> I can't handle it. Can't handle it. All right. So there's our third strand. And that, again, is going into that hammered ring that came from Tierra Cast, which we're going to use on the other side as well. But <clears throat> haven't attached it just yet because I wanted to show you guys the length. And what I'm using here. So one of mine is already ready. I used two different colors and two different um, finishes, if you will, because one of them is smooth finished and one of them is raw edge. Uh, faux suede lace. So I used navy blue and green. Now, I know that some of you are going to hate that. 
But once it is put together, I think you're going to see it looks much, much better. If you don't like this, use something completely different. But give it a chance until you till you see it. So let me show you. Um, I, I also used a ribbon end to crimp the ends here instead of trying to force all four strands of the faux suede lace into a, um, a cord end. I love these and I forget that I have a ton of these. They work for things other than ribbon and this is just one of those um, instances where it really works. So let's go ahead and attach these to this one and then we will attach our suede to the other side where we haven't done it yet. All right. Okay, so we're gonna attach that one. And again, when you go to attach these, just like with the chain, you wanna be sure that you're doing the um, doing them in order so they don't get all crisscrossed on you. Okay. All right, so that side is done. You're gonna be able to see all of this on the bust. It's gonna look amazing on the bust, trust me. So pretty. Okay, so now we need to attach our faux suede lace over here. I've got two pieces and all I wanna do is just take those two pieces and fold those in half. So I wanna find the middle Okay, when I find the middle, make a loop and I'm going to take that loop and I'm going to go through the decorative ring, open the loop up and then <clears throat> take my ends through it and pull and then <clears throat> can really kind of adjust this however you want it to be. I'm kind of picky about how all of mine lays. I want the blue in the middle of the green. So I'm gonna go kind of slow here to set it all the way I want it. Also don't like it when it's kind of twisted. I'm just kind of picky, honestly, uh, but you don't have to be, right? All right, so I have that. It's nice and chunky, so it's it's balanced, right, with our three strands, because our three strands are kind of chunky in themselves, it's kind of heavy. So I wanted to be sure that the length part of this that's gonna go up around your neck was also nice and chunky and balanced. That doesn't mean you have to use four pieces of leather to do this. Um, you can use a thicker chain. I would recommend using, um, if you want to keep everything balanced, to use a thicker chain than the five the strands that you use in the middle here. Um, because a single strand is definitely thin in comparison to all of the rest of this, and it may feel a little heavy in the front. Um, so that's why I recommend something like the suede or other kind of leather um, you know, knotted cord or braided cord, something like that. A nice piece of ribbon would work. Um, you just want to be sure that it doesn't look like you've got little thin, thin layer of something holding up all of these three very substantial layers to something. Um, so that's kind of why I chose to do it the way that I did. And now I'm going to smooth all of these out. Coming up here to the ends. Again, I'm going to use that ribbon end, so I don't want them to overlap each other. I want it to try to be as flat and even as I can possibly get it. And then I need to trim my ends up to make sure that everything is even. Because you can see it's not quite, not quite even. So I'm going to trim to the shortest. Okay. Then I'm going to use my ribbon end 
And my ribbon end, I do squeeze it a little bit before I put the cord ends in there. Lay those in there. And then I like to use my flat nose pliers for this. Just to finish squeezing it closed. Now, you can use a little bit of glue in there if you want to. But I do find that if you get a really good closure on these, you don't need it. All right. Like that's, those are not going to slip out of there. It's nice and secure. I've got the little loop here so that I can add my hardware. Now down here on the other end, however, if you do want to add some glue to this so that your knot does not come undone, I like to use the hypo cement and I only use it on the back and it only takes a little bit. Mine's kind of gross, but. <laughs> very very messy glue here there we go okay so just a little bit back here on the back of the knot so that it doesn't come undone and that's going to dry clear plus it's on the back so you're never going to see any of it and I'll do the same thing over here all right if you use something else, though, that's really grippy, you may not need to use any glue at all. Okay, and then the last thing to do here is just to add our hardware. I'm going to use two jump rings. I do have to grab a clasp, and then I'm going to show you what this looks like on the bust because it looks so much prettier hanging than it does laying flat here. Just cleaning up all my crimp beads that I dumped out for whatever reason. Ever just wonder, like, why did I make that a necessary mess? That's definitely the way I feel. Why did I dump all of those out? Did not need to do that. Okay. So, put my jump ring and my clasp. Close that back. And then a jump ring on the other side. Yeah, you definitely could braid the strands, and I think that they would look beautiful, for sure. There's a lot of a lot of things you could you could alter about this to make this really cool. All right, I'm gonna turn you guys around, and I'm gonna put this on the bust so that you can see what it looks like because it looks so much better hanging. Now, I actually I'm gonna tie this because a little on the long side and I want you guys to be able to see it really well this way first all right who's ready for the big reveal this is such a pretty necklace look how beautiful oh my goodness <laughs> I am in love with it like this came out of my brain at midnight right Thanks to Colleen, nothing was coming out of my brain until I talked to her. <laughs> but yeah, I think it turned out beautifully. Like I could not have asked for a, a more beautiful piece of jewelry uh, at the end of the day, for sure. I, I was had no idea that this is where my brain was going to go. Uh, happy accidents, right? I mean, that it turned out really, really well. So, um, yeah, this is definitely going to go over in my Etsy shop. So if you just want to buy it instead of recreating it, you absolutely can do that. I'll put it over there. Uh, I'll try to get it in the shop later this afternoon. Um, but yeah, it turned out really well. I think the only thing that I have about it that is kind of frustrating me at the moment, and I'm going to be able to fix it is you see the distance between the chain and that upper, uh, this upper strand is a little bit longer than the distance between the chain and the bottom strand. And that happened because I had to add those extra jump rings, right? Remember we talked about how I wanted to see the fullness of the five pieces of chain instead of just that side view, because I added that extra jump ring, 
it made this middle strand hang just a little bit longer. I knew that was going to happen. And because of that, it has really kind of thrown off the balance just slightly of the three strands and the distance between them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a jump ring to this top strand and that's going to, that's going to even everything out. It'll be one of the smaller jump rings like I used for the chain. So it will drop that, that, top strand down just a tiny tiny bit to make it more um, evenly spaced in between there it looks fine without it but it is going to drive me crazy and before I put it in my Etsy shop I do have to make that change just because I'm kind of you know I'm, I'm a little OCD about things like that but I think it turned out really well I do love the um, the two colors of the faux suede lace here for the length but if that's not your thing I, I totally get it you could definitely change that up like we talked about you could use ribbon here you could use another thick piece of leather something different um, even rope I've been seeing a lot of rope jewelry though that's more of kind of like a summer thing and we are kind of transitioning into fall um, but I I can see rope being used through the fall too if you use the correct colors I don't know that I would use that like light light hemp color necessarily but um, you've got alternatives to the length I did want to be sure that it was just as as balanced up here though you can see i think a thin piece of chain just wouldn't quite have been enough to make this piece uh come together very well but i mean i don't know you try it and see what what you want to use for the length if you don't like the double but uh, i think it turned out really beautifully and uh thank you colleen <laughs> for helping me <laughs> so yeah there you go guys so we talked about a lot of things, right? It was a simple stringing project, but we did have to kind of troubleshoot a little bit and talk about some of those small little details and issues that come up as you're creating jewelry. So, you know, don't ever discount a simple stringing project for being 100% simple. There is always some little lessons in there that you can always learn, things that you can do to improve your jewelry making skills um, and little things like that chain situation that I had never had come up before, but it's because of the way the chain was shaped. So just think about those kinds of things, right? And when those come up, if you have a question, please don't feel don't feel like you can't reach out and ask us. You can reach me. You can uh, call the team. Well, not call us, but you know, you can call on us is what I'm saying, right? If you've got questions. But our community is a wonderful place to place those questions because there is so much creativity, um, so much um, knowledge, like the wealth of knowledge in our community is incredible. So if you've ever got a question, post it in the community because somebody out there is going to know an answer or have some suggestions for you. So if you're not already a part of our community, please come and join us because we would love to have you. All right. So that is it for me today, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me and uh, letting me be a part of your Tuesday afternoon. I hope your week continues to go wonderfully and creatively and sparkly, right? Um, Hardwired meets today at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Don't forget about that. We're going to do our weekly project today. Everybody else, I will be with you again on Friday at 1 p.m. for our Feel Good Friday show. And then again at 4 p.m. for Master Maker. So you're not done with me yet, right? Not yet. You've got a couple more times to see me. <laughs> All right, guys. I love you so, so much. Thank you to my team. Thank you, Nicole and Colleen. You guys are amazing. And thank you, everybody else as well. I love you. I love you. And I'll see you soon. Bye, guys. <laughs>